Welcome to Butler Hemp Co. in Kane Canna. Let's take a tour of the lab. Hi guys, I'm Heath Martin, founder and CEO of Butler Hemp Co. in Kane Canna Extraction. The number one question that we get when people are talking to us about our products um, is what does it actually take to extract high quality CBD oil from industrial hemp? And so we thought we'd take you on a tour of our lab today and uh, show you exactly the processes that we go through uh, to get to the uh, exceptionally high quality CBD goods that we sell through Butler Hemp Co. This building was purchased in 2019 and as you can see um, there's a lot more going on now than there was in uh, the early days. This was actually a 9,000 square foot warehouse and once we purchased that the real work began. So in order to control the processes um, that we need to and to obviously work in a safe environment we had to add some things and we had to add fire sprinklers, we had to have obviously heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and then just uh, obviously ventilation for the whole system as well. So we'll walk through the lab. Um, it essentially works in reverse. So we just walked in from the office side. We're gonna take you down to the, uh, to the end of the lab rooms where the hemp would be uh, brought in, and we will take you through the full step uh, of processing that we go through. We essentially built three different lab rooms as we'll walk by, you'll see those, and then we'll take a little bit of a deeper dive into those as the tour goes on. So our first step, um, once we get the hemp into our facility, is actually grinding and decarboxylation. So when the hemp comes in, once it's passed all required uh, testing for microbials, heavy metals, and pesticides, once we know the hemp's clean, the first step is to actually grind it. And in grinding our hemp, we ensure a uniform particle size so that when we go to do our actual extraction using liquid or supercritical CO2, we get a much more efficient and uniform extraction on, on all of our hemp product. We certainly don't want to leave any cannabinoids behind, and we want to do the best job that we can throughout the process. So this is our grinder. Um, one of our technicians will be here. They will load the hemp into this grinder. We grind roughly 2,000 pounds a day. And uh, that ensures that we can always grind a little bit more than we can get through the whole process. Our goal daily is, is roughly 1,000 pounds. Depending on the quality of the hemp, the oil content, things like that, you know, we may, we may get 800, we may get 1,200, but you know, 1,000 pounds per shift is, is always our daily goal. So once the hemp is ground, it will get blown into one of these super sacks. Once this super sack is full, we will take it into the next step or the first lab room, uh, which is decarboxylation. So follow me. So as you see, we have multiple grinders here. And depending on the quality of the hemp or the quality of the, the cannabis flower, we may choose to utilize one or the other. This particular flower that we're grinding right now has an exceptionally high oil and an exceptionally high terpene content. So we chose to use our knife grinders uh, for this particular project, but ultimately the particulate size is gonna be the same. This is just a little more of a delicate process. This is exceptional flour. This is gonna be used in, in Butler Hemp Co products uh, when, we, when we formulate those. So as you can hear, um, we're decarboxylating right now, and decarboxylating is just a fancy way of saying that we heat the cannabis up to a predetermined temperature and we can convert CBDA, or cannabidolic acid, into CBD. Basically what happens is we warm it up in the oven, we get it to a particular temperature under vacuum, which is what you hear going on right now, and there's a carbon chain that breaks, the acid molecule is relieved, um, converting that into, into CBD um, that's, that's usable for the human body. So as we decarboxylate, a couple of things are happening. Not only are we making that chemical change in the plant, but we are also using the vacuum and the warmer temperatures. We are pulling off any excess moisture that happens to be in the hemp plant. Most of the hemp biomass or the hemp flower that we get in here 
is somewhere between 8 and 11%, 8, 8 to 12% moisture. Before it goes into our CO2 extraction machines, we want to pull that water moisture level down to sub 4.5%. So we are decarboxylating, we are also pulling off some water moisture, and all of this one step process that happens inside these vacuum ovens. As you can see, there are trays loaded with hemp inside these ovens. So we've got five trays per oven, six ovens. We can roughly decarb 12 to 1500 pounds per shift and get this hemp ready for the next step, which is supercritical CO2 extraction. Follow me. Once the hip is decarboxylated, it will be loaded into one of these carts. The hip does change color a little bit through that process. It never gets hot, but uh, it does uh, oftentimes darken just a little bit. And actually you can uh, tell that it has a, a different aroma after it's come out of the ovens versus uh, going into them. So this is our CO2 extraction room and we've got one of our technicians, Timber, here. And he is actually loading an extraction machine. We have six E140 supercritical CO2 machines. And depending on maintenance and scheduling and the, and the amount of hemp that we actually have to process in any given lot, we may run, you know, two, three, four, six, whatever suits our process the best. But I'm glad you're going to see this actually. So we insert these 10 micron nylon bags into our extraction column. So these columns are roughly four and a half foot deep and five inches around. And they're pressure vessels to hold back the extreme pressure of the liquid CO2. So Timber will then insert, insert the rod down there. He's already pre-filled his bag partially. And he will insert that bag into an extraction column. After that, He's basically uh, going to load it the old-fashioned way. Every uh, pound of hemp that goes through this, this facility gets, uh, gets touched one scoop at a time by one of our technicians. We actually really like that because if there are any quality assurance issues with the product, we always have our hands on it, we always have our eyes on it, we can see it. So we'll let him continue loading. It's about a five-minute process that he's got to wrap up, and we'll go to one of the machines that's running. So this is Rusty Trusty machine number one. Um, and as you can see, we're actively running right now. The green light is on. That means it is actually going through an extraction cycle currently. So basically what happens, we have a large CO2 tank outside and we have some mini bulk CO2 tanks in here as well. These machines are all plumbed um, where they can pull CO2 and start their process. So once we Input in our recipe, we've set our times and our temperatures and our pressure parameters in here. We basically, we hit start. When we hit start on this machine, the machine automatically opens its valve. It allows CO2 either from the recycler or fresh CO2 to come in and reach this pump. Once the CO2 reaches that pump, that's a large diaphragm pump, it is sent through one of our extraction columns. Currently we're running on column two, and we're running at 4,200 PSI. So that pump is sending liquid CO2 through the hip biomass in this column and pushing our desired cannabinoids and terpenes that we're trying to extract into one of three collection vessels, or all three, depending on the parameters that we've got set up. The really neat thing about using liquid CO2 to do our extraction, or supercritical CO2, is that CO2 under high pressure is a liquid. As it moves through the process, we use these regulators, or a series of these regulators, to relieve that pressure. Once the CO2 gets below roughly 1200 PSI, it turns back into a gas. The cannabinoids and terpenes that we have extracted cannot do that. So, they precipitate out into one of our three collection vessels. The liquid or the, the gaseous CO2 at this point 
is pushed back on around to one of our recycling columns, it is repressurized and recondensed. So we are not losing the CO2 that we are using. This is an absolute closed loop system. So the CO2 that we are using to extract gets recycled multiple times throughout the, the run. Our run times right now are roughly an hour. It works very well having six machines with an hour run time so that we basically get into a rotation and we have 10 minutes to load each machine as they finish up their runs. We can load column one while column two is operating. That's what you saw Timber doing there in the beginning. So there really is no change over time. Once he's got one loaded, two finishes up, we can swap right over to, to number one and repeat the process of pulling the spent hemp or the spent biomass out of two and reloading that so it's a continuous flow. As you can see here, this is our post extracted biomass. So this stuff has actually come out of the extractor and he's just dumped a couple and this is actually really neat. You can see that this is, you might be able to see some gas coming off there from the liquid CO2. So this, this extracted biomass is completely devoid of cannabinoids um, and terpenes. We tested every step of the way. We've had our post extracted material tested many times. We never leave more than one tenth of a percent of CBD in that material. And like the material we're running today is roughly 12% cannabinoids. So, you know, we're, we're leaving uh, a very small amount and, and oftentimes it's even lower than that. So after this process is done and what we call the CBD crude has been extracted from the biomass, we will then come into our third and final lab room, which is refinement. So this is our third and final room. Um, this is basically our refinement room. As the crude comes out of the, the CO2 extractors, it contains all the oils and the lipids and the fats and maxes that the, the hemp plant has to offer. So in our finished products, we really don't want the lipids, the fats, the waxes. So the first step is winterization. Basically what that means um, to summarize it very quickly, is that we get our cannabinoid oil very, very cold. And obviously we all know what happens to a, a fat or a wax. When it gets cold, it solidifies. So once we freeze it in one of our uh, negative 40 Celsius freezers overnight, we will then pour it into one of our, we call them drain droids. They're basically in a scientific model, they're just a large Buchner funnel. These funnel, funnels are under vacuum. So you can see the CBD oil in there. As that vacuum level is increased, the CBD flows through it. On the bottom, there's actually a filter and that filter will catch any of the fats or waxes that you see there in the lighter color. When we finish up with this, there will just be a thin quarter inch to a half inch cake of wax there, um, which is it's basically waste. Once we've done that, we need to go over here to our rotary evaporators. We want to pull off any remaining ethanol that was blended in during the winterization process, and we want to recapture that. So this is, this is a large scale 20 liter rotary evaporator. As you can see, basically what we're doing here is we are evaporating the winterization ethanol off of the CBD crew. Um, this one is running and running very well right now. You can see that we are reclaiming our ethanol. Um, this is basically a large still um, that we can control every parameter of. And then we will reclaim the ethanol and use it tomorrow, use it on our, our next winterization run. So the final step to get to a high quality CBD distillate, once the winterization is complete, we will take the now winterized crude out of our rotary evaporators and we will go into distillation. So we have two six inch stainless steel light film distillation apparatuses here um, that we run, you know, one at a time or in conjunction depending on the amount of volume that we're uh, sending through the facility. This one right now is doing our first pass distillation. And what that means is we want to extract the terpenes 
from the CBD crude before we get into our actual final distillation where we're distilling the, can the CBD or the, the cannabidiol. So we are pulling terpenes at this point. One of the reasons that we do that is because terpenes are the, the scent oils or the flavonoids on the plant. And if we don't take them away before we distill, you're gonna get a very pungent flavor in your CBD oil. Now, some people like that. Some people really appreciate it. Some people are absolute connoisseurs of terpenes and cannabis oils. But for some people in the general public, that can be a little too strong of a flavor, a little too strong of a smell. So we remove the terpenes and then we reintroduce them at formulation oftentimes to get the desired flavor in our oils. So distillation, uh, actually for me, the owner, it's, it's one of my favorite processes. It's probably one that's the most trickiest. It took us the most time to, to really dial in. Uh, we're basically taking the crude that we pulled out of the rotary evaporator, putting it in our feed flask here, and pumping it up into the top of our distillation column. And what's going on inside here is actually really neat. So this distillation column, we've got set at a, at a particular temperature. And that temperature is you know, what, where we know that the terpenes or CBD will evaporate at. So inside here is basically four wiper blades, white film distillation. So those blades are wiping that oil on the outside of this warm column. As that happens, the heat on the outside of that column evaporates or distills the oil. And there is a, a cooler rod or a condensing rod that goes up through the middle of this. It's, it's really no different than a cold drink in the summer. So you set your cold drink, it's warm, it's humid, and that cold drink condenses water moisture. Well, we're doing the same thing in a very controlled environment, using different temperatures to distill CBD or terpenes. So as you can see right now, we're, we're running the, the CBD crude through, and the crude is coming over here once it's been devoid of its terpenes. Now, there's not a ton of terpenes that come off. You can you can see a little bit here in the bottom of this flask, um, but uh, that's that's what we do to take the terpenes and the flavonoids out of the oil, which will then later be used um, as flavoring or scent or reconstituted back in our product. Once the terpene run is done here, we will then take the crude, run it through again. We will adjust our temperatures. We will adjust our vacuum pressures. We will adjust pump flow speeds to set it for the parameters that we need to do to distill CBD. So, thanks for taking a walk through us, or walk through our lab with us, and checking out our, our processes. And we'll uh, we'll catch you on the next time, butlerhemp.com.